Hello and welcome to all the viewers. In this video, we will talk about a brown that is rectangular nozzle static structural analysis using solid works. We will also discuss about few of the design solution in case of design failure. So we will start now. So this slide represents the learnings in this video. Very first we will discuss about the problem statement. So if you see the right hand you will find the schematic which represent the abrown nozzle mounted on the pressure vessel head. So here we will discuss about the what are the loadings, how to apply a loading boundary conditions and how to perform solution in case of solid works. Then we will discuss about how to extract the results and we will also discuss with respect to yield criteria, the failure reasons. And then we'll discuss about the design solution in case of failures. So this slide represents uh, our actual problem statement for our present video. As we discussed earlier, this is what the schematic for our brown nozzle, which is mounted on the head. So this is basically a two as to one ellipsoid head. On this, you will find nozzle. So here we need to perform a static structural analysis of a brown nozzle and we need to do a design change for an acceptable design. So here we need to refer a following details here a loading condition of 1 mega Pascal so internal pressure so approximately 10 bar pressure is there and the boundary condition is fixed support at the dish end head face so at this bottom we need to apply a fixed support and then we need to apply a normal constraint at the nozzle top face. So here we are going to apply a normal constraint. So basically it will represent that it will not going to move in vertical directions. So in actual there will be a flange which will going to couple with this male or female connections and then that will connect to the remaining accessories. So that's why we are going to apply a normal constraint. And here the material is like plain carbon steel. So this is most widely used to manufacture the pressure vessels and here the re respect to yield stress for plain carbon steel as we know that 220 mega Pascal. So we will consider that as an acceptance criteria and with respect to that we will see where we will find the acceptable or not. So what we will do now we will go to our solid solid works and there we will perform this simulations. So now if you see here uh, we have imported geometry in a solid work window and you will find this is what the schematic uh, or you can say the geometry for this respect to your boiler head. So basically this overall nozzle is used in case of fire tube of boiler. So which are basically used for hydrocarbon processing and you will find this is one of the connections. So here from where there is a boiler fire tube will going to insert it. So this is there is a single fire to boiler or double fire tool boiler you will find in case of uh, boiler pressure vessel. So here you will find a single similarly you will find a parallel series of another nozzle and from one nozzle there is an entry and from another nozzle there is an exit for the respective fire tubes. So uh, there is a more chances of design failure over here. So basically as we know that there is no specific guideline to in case of ASM design standard to design a brown nozzle. So that's why the simulation is most widely used to perform the or to do the validations. So it is basically designed by considering as a rectangular or circular shape and then later on the respective thickness is decided for the nozzle as well as shell. And then simulation is used designed by analysis approach of ASME in order to validate the this. So at present video, we will not discuss about design by analysis approach. We will only discuss about uh, the yield criteria and the similar fashion. You can also use the uh, design by analysis approach. In that case, we need to do the stress variation across the thicknesses. Now, in order to perform the simulation in solid work, we just need to keep the simulations. And here you will find the study advisor here. We can do define a new study. And here we can perform a pressure vessel simulation, right? And we will going to use a static structural, yes. 
now very first we need to define the material so right click here apply and edit material so you will find there is a library inside the uh, solid work so out of this at present we are using a plain carbon stain so basically here the details like young's modulus is 20 uh, 210 gpa or you can say 2.1 e raised to 5 megapascal Poison's ratio is 0.28 and these are the two details which are used for a simulation and here the yield strain is approximately 220 megapascal. So we will apply this for all materials and we will close. Now our material definition is defined. So connection there is no need to define a connection because this is already a single geometry and then we will define an external fixture. So here right click fix geometry. Here we will consider the Tension bottom face you will find here fix support once you will click on that it will highlight it over here just yes so in addition to that there is one more support here that is normal constraint so right click insert fix geometry we will select this face and here in advanced option on a flat face we will apply a normal constraint you can see in this direction okay apply once you will apply you will find the constraint in this vertical direction okay now the next phase is that we need to apply a pressure that is right click pressure and we will select the respective phase just we need to click and it will automatically select the all the respective internal faces okay and here we can check megapascal and we will going to apply a 1 megapascal basically a 10 bar pressure or you can say 1 that is Newton per mm square okay and yes so now we had applied a pressure we had applied a constraint the next phase that we need to define our mesh so right click create a mesh so we will not go into that much more depth you will find here there are more details so we will just move this cursor on a finer side so you can see here there is a change in mesh density once you will go to finer the finer will be like 2.3 and you will find this 0.1 and 8 of transition so similarly if you go here then you will find it is approximately 10 so we will keep in between and we will keep some fine mesh generate so in actual you should use the more finer mesh and you should keep at least minimum two to three elements across the thickness okay but once you will do the fine mesh it will take much more time so that's why i'm not going to in that much depth now once your meshing is performed and uh, you just go to and run the study so now it will going to solve the simulations now if you see here our simulation is performed and uh, and deform shape I will keep and you will find here the maximum stress is 293 we will change the unit right click edit definitions here we can keep a unit as a megapascal chart setting we will keep uh, floating so that uh, we will see the actual digits and we will keep here one ok now if you see uh, we will first hide the boundary conditions as well as loading conditions so that we can see the actual stress plot now if you see here the maximum stress is 293 megapascal and you will find on these corners here also you will find from internal so what we can do now uh, we'll just check we'll try to probe that so here probe and if you click on that so you will find see 265 similarly here that is 265 and similarly here that is 257 so it is basically between 250 to 270 similarly on this reason we will see the junction it is like approximately 288 so here also you will find 293.9 so here what we uh, saw the high stress value okay and here 270 so on this reason you will find let is uh, 270 here you can see in the details 272 
280 sorry 280 to 290 okay now we will clear this we'll clear the solutions okay so we will just keep one value so that uh, it will not disturb so go to plot tools click on a probe click here 288 293.9 i will clear this 293 okay so basically uh, we know that on the junction we are we found that 293 megapascal is a high stress location and which is more than our 220 so that's why we can say that design is not safe so the, even you can see the displacement path you can see how it is deforming Mm, edit definition and here we can put some user skill we'll put 15 and uh, if you want to animate that you will also you can see the animation you can reduce this so now if you see here how it is deforming we are applying an internal pressure and there is a constraint over here as well as constraint at the bottom so that's why this space is not me and my exam spaces will going to develop at this sections okay you can also see your here now we'll close this so that is what the dis so i think we should show the displacement and for this displacement we should animate now you can see the animations for the displacement right so basically uh, here you will find on the knuckle reason knuckle reason basically is nearby knuckle and this chain we are come to know the high stress so we will can that define okay here is the, our the maximum displacement values see here that is 4.1 and here also you can see that is 4.3 okay so what we will come to know that uh, for the present loading and boundary conditions uh, of this nozzle shield junction is having a failure uh, which is approximately a 293 megapascal so our limit is 220 so we need to do uh, we need to reduce the stress level by 70 megapascal or you can say approximately 80 megapascal so that our design is acceptable so in that case there are few things you need to think as we know that there is a failure at this junction so we should either provide a weld here and we should also go for a reinforcing pad attachment so these are the two design solutions which will come into our mind so there is some guidelines are given for a reinforcing pad in pressure vessel course so you can refer that at present we will do that so i will open a new job first we will take a snapshot of this So now if you see this is what our second geometry here you will find the weld what we do is actually generally when there is a details are provided we generally do not model the weld but there this weld will act as a reinforcing pad or you can also think of it will act as a extra thickness or steepness it will provide additional steepness at the junction so it is always useful to model a 3d solid well when we used to do the simulation like this so here we can just quickly run the study i will just keep uh, pv and we will keep design iteration 
Okay. Okay. P R one. Okay. Now we will quickly apply a material that is plain carbon steel. Apply close, and similarly we will apply fixtures that is fixed support. Course we will apply the bottom. Similarly, we will apply one more support that is normal constraint and the top face here and we can go in details there on a flat face so we will apply this constraint in the normal direction okay and then uh, we will apply a pressure so we just need to select all the internal faces click on that so that face will be selected so here you will find six faces and a pressure of one mega pascal now pressure is applied now we can go with the mesh so we will give some fine mesh generate so let's see now the machine is performed okay now machine is done and then quickly you just run the study So now we can click and here we can see first right click edit definitions so we will just keep our unit system as well as uh, some tried setting in a floating and one so now if you see here uh, i will just hide pressure or boundary conditions hide hide okay now if you see here our stresses are like 261 mega pascal now uh, if you click on see maximum stresses ray region is somewhere here as well as here and as well as at the junction you can see here so what we can do we can go to probe and we'll click on that respective regions so here we have like few 256 mega pascal here also 250 mega pascal right 232 mega pascal so 256 is higher here also 261 so which is like 261.8 the maximum stress on this side similarly here it is 256 similarly here it is 253 so stresses is approximately 260 here and 250 over here 256 okay so i will clear now so we come to know that the maximum stress is is at the junction but if you compare with the previous one the stresses are reduced now we can also check the displacements so it is also 4.2 mega pascal over here but if you see the stress levels as well as some of the deformation is also reduced so what we can do now we can quickly take a snapshot of this and we can go we can put over here so what we come to know from this comparison that when we put a weld off so weld i have uh, this model consists of weld of one inch and the stresses are like from 293 without weld and it got reduced to 261 so approximately 30 mega pascal or we can say the 32 mega pascal stresses are reduced in this case but still it is more than the your yield limit so we need to think for a next solution design solutions okay so we can do one thing we can go to open a new model that is the next So now if you see here the model which is consist of so approximately 8.5 inch width and uh, one inch thick reinforcing pad we have created so as we know that we found that high stresses at the junction so that's why we are creating a more steepness at the junction so we can go to run 
and here we can write PV ET ETR2. We can quickly run the study also so that we can do the comparison and we'll check these stresses. Apply close. Apply. So very force will apply the similar fashion constraint. And a similar fashion will apply further constraint. And a flat face. This one. Okay, now we can apply a pressure of 1 mega Pascal. Right, we have selected all six faces. We know the pressure of 10 bar or 1 mega Pascal. Now we can do the mesh, create mesh, and we will do some fine mesh. So this is the third simulation we are performing. The first one we just did the simple nozzle shear junction simulation. The second one we did with the weld and now third we are doing with the reinforcing pad. So just run the simulation. Now if you see our simulation is performed and we'll just first hide the boundary conditions. Right click, you need to just hide and here you can similarly go to stress edit definition so here one message stress we can take mega pascal we will keep uh, floating and only one digit generate so now if you see here the stresses maximum stress we found that is 203.7 mega pascal and our yield limit is 220 mega pascal so it means that with the second iteration, the stresses are well below the yield limit. So likewise, we need to play or we need to think, suppose we are having high stresses at this transmission, so we should think for a first weld creation, then next we should think for a reinforcing pad. Okay, now we can do one thing, we can even see the actual values with the probe. So I think with this here, the stresses are almost gone. So here it is 170 mega pascal on this one side right and here it is approximately of 116 here also 170 169 okay so basically junction stresses are completely removed so here are few stresses here that is 197 okay so stresses are below i will clear this Stresses are below 200 at the junction, and here is 183, here also 184, and from inside we can see here it is 195. So still uh, stresses are below 200 mega Pascal at the all regions. So also we can check the displacement at the definite. Um, we can keep user defined so here you will find the displacement is reduced from 4.5 to 3.5 okay and now if you want to see we will put some scale like this 50 so with the 50 you will find how it is deforming and we will try to animate right we will try to reduce the scale. So due to internal pressure, it is behaving like that. Okay, so that is all about our displacement. Now we can further take a snapshot for this. And we can put that snapshot on our Excel. And we will try to arrange all in a one frame. So what we found that the way when we do the simulation for a first nozzle shell junction, 
the stresses are 293 megapascal when we do uh, when we added a weld that is solid weld of 1 inch the stresses are reduced see 293.9 stresses are reduced to 61.8 and then we further check that it is above yield limit this is our yield limit okay so it is found not acceptable with respect to yield criteria similarly it is not acceptable and here you will find it is only 203.7 so it is we can say that it is acceptable design with respect to yield criteria so that is what our remark for a present simulation okay so likewise we need to do the simulations So if you see here, the stresses are shifted from this time to this one, but still it is low. Okay, so that's it. I think we perform the different. So likewise, you need to think for a different design simulations uh, or different design iterations. In actual pressure vessel, you have to do instead of yield, you need to do a stress minimization across the thickness at this, at this, and at this, and that stress SCL plot you need to compare like SCL one for that you should compare allowable limit and you should compare a stress observe and then you can put a remote so that is what the pressure vessel uh, validation is to be done as per asme but in general if you don't have allowable limit in that case we usually use the yield limit and with that yield limit we basically decide the factor of safety so this by this is so this divided by this 0.7 so we should have a more factor of safety more than one so fys so if you see here it is basically more than one so like that we need to conclude when we don't have a allowable limit or we don't need to follow the asm okay so that's it guys thank you thank you for watching this complete video let me know your comments i will be there to help you thank you once again